Welcome to Every Country in Africa Part 6. If you haven't watched Part 1, 2, 3 and 5, I have a whole playlist here. Just click on the card here to watch them first. The last country we covered in Part 5 was Guinea-Bissau, which has decent bilateral ties with Chad. Chad is a landlocked country in North Central Africa. It is the largest of the 16 landlocked countries of Africa and also the 21st largest in the world. The capital and largest city is N'Djamena and while it gained independence from France in 1960, the design of its flag was based on the flag of France. Other than that, Chad's flag is exactly the same as Romania's, the only difference being that Chad's flag has a tad bit lighter shade of blue. Chad also owns the largest portion of Lake Chad, where the country gets its name from. The lake is economically important, providing water to more than 30 million people living in the four countries surrounding it. The nation has several regions, a desert zone in the north, an arid Sahelian belt in the center, and a more fertile Sudanian savanna zone in the south. Lake Chad is the second largest wetland in Africa. The Tibesti Mountains in the north of the country hold some of the world's best camel racing competitions. The races are put on by the local Tubu tribe, who are distant relatives of the Western Sahara's Tuareg people. Although non-Muslims are not allowed entry, it is possible to watch from afar. The country historically, the area surrounding Lake Chad, has been inhabited since at least 500 BC. The lake is the remains of an immense lake that occupied 330,000 square kilometers of the Chad Basin 7,000 years ago. Although it is the fifth largest country in Africa and has a population of 16 million, much of the northern part of the country lies in the Sahara Desert and has a population density of only about 20 persons per square mile, that is 8 persons per square kilometers, due to the harsh conditions of the massive Sahara Desert. The Sahara may be the world's largest desert, but the oldest desert in the world is located in Namibia. Namibia gets its name from the Namib Desert, which is a coastal desert that is estimated to be over 50 million years old. It contains some of the planet's driest regions. Its Mars-like landscape features nothing except high sand dunes and the point where the desert meets the sea are the key attractions of this UNESCO World Heritage Site. Post-apocalyptic movie Mad Max Fury Road was shot here officially known as the Republic of Namibia, is located on the southwestern coast of Africa and until 1968, the country went by the name Southwest Africa. It has a long narrow panhandle or extension known as the Caprivi Strip based on a German misconception that access to the Zambezi River despite the Victoria Falls meant access to the Indian Ocean. At the very end of the panhandle, Namibia shares a river border with Zambia and Zimbabwe, making it the world's only quadrapoint between sovereign nations. Namibia has 2.7 million people in a country that is twice the size of California, making it the second least densely populated nation in the world after Mongolia. The country is home to some of the highest sand dunes in the world, the world's most extensive meteorite shower. The Gibeon meteorite shower occurred in prehistoric times in central Namibia and remains are exhibited in Vinduk, the capital city. Mysterious fairy circles are striking regularly sized and spaced bare circles surrounded by grasses that occur over thousands of square kilometers in the country. The mechanisms explaining their origin, shape and persistence remain unknown. Skeleton Coast, which lines the Nabib Desert, is famous for shipwrecks due to blinding fog. Over 1,000 ships met their end here and the bushmen refer to it as the land god made in anger. The country has one of the largest concentrations of rock art in Africa and has the largest population of free roaming cheetahs in the world. The San people have resided in the country for more than 6,000 years. 
They are one of the oldest cultures in the world, dating back to the Stone Age. They are some of the only black people in the world that have natural epicanthic folds on their eyes, similar to East Asians. After 106 years of German and South African rule, Namibia became independent in 1990. Under South African rule, the country used the rand to transact and only started using the Namibian dollar after independence. Currently, both currencies are accepted. Germany colonized the country, but after the First World War and Germany's defeat, it ceded the territory. Namibia shares this German colonial history with Burundi. Burundi is one of the oldest nation states in Africa. It is one of the few countries in Africa where colonialists neither created or altered its boundaries as its modern boundaries remained similar to those of its ancient kingdoms. The nation existed as an independent kingdom for about 200 years before colonization. It is a landlocked state that borders Tanzania, Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo and has a population of about 9.8 million people. It is a small but densely populated country, slightly smaller than Hawaii but with eight times the population, making it the 20th most densely populated country in the world. The Burundian flag consists of a white satire which divides the field into alternating red and green areas. The center of the saltire merges into a white disc, on which there are six red solid six-pointed stars outlined in green. The three stars represent the three main ethnic groups, the Tutsi, Hutu and Twa. Both Twa and Hutu people have coexisted in Burundi for over half a millennium. Tutsis are considered later entrants though their arrival is estimated to have occurred more than 500 years ago. This is what made them to have a homogeneous national language despite different ethnicities. From 1890, the kingdoms of Urundi were colonized by Germany and incorporated into German East Africa. Belgium then occupied Burundi until 1962 when the country finally seceded and became the independent kingdom of Burundi. According to World Bank statistics, Burundi has climbed seven places on the ease of doing business world ratings ladder, leaping from position 157 in 2013 to 140 this year. Over the past year, Kenya and Tanzania have engaged in increased competition, improving operations in their key ports and significantly cutting cargo dwell time in efforts to better service landlocked countries like Burundi. Burundi officially has two capital cities. Gitega is the political capital, while Bujumbura is its economic capital. The country won its first Olympic gold medal in its debut appearance at the 1996 Olympic Games. Cows are a symbol of happiness, health and prosperity. A common Kirundi greeting is Amashio, which translates as, may you have many herds of cattle. The response is Amashongore which translates as, may you have many herds of female cattle. The more cows you have, the better your social status. Burundi does not have a coastline, but that does not stop it from having a beach. The beach, which is part of the shore of Lake Tanganyika, is one of the African Great Lakes shared with Tanzania. The southernmost lake in the East Africa Rift System is found in Malawi. Officially the Republic of Malawi, this is a landlocked country in southeastern Africa that was formerly known as Nyasaland. It is bordered by Tanzania to the north, Lake Malawi to the east, Mozambique to the east and south, and Zambia to the west. It was established as a British protectorate in 1889 and gained independence in 1964. Malawi is a majority Christian country with a significant Muslim minority. Government surveys indicate that 87% of the country is Christian, with a minority 11.6% Islamic population. It was the first country in Africa to grow tea on a commercial scale. Malawi has been producing tea for well over a century 
and it is the continent's second largest tea producer. Lake Malawi contains the largest number of fish species of any lake in the world. There are between 500 and 1,000 fish species, and it is home to a vast array of chichlids, virtually all of which are endemic to the lake. These chichlids are globally popular as aquarium fish because of their bright colors. The lake is 350 miles long from its northern to its southern tip, and it accounts for more than one-fifth of the country's total area, making it the fifth largest freshwater lake in the world by volume, the ninth largest lake in the world by area, and the third largest and second deepest lake in Africa. Deep in the south of the country, the second city, Blantyre, was founded by Scottish settlers in 1876. Former President Joyce Banda was the country's first female president and Africa's second female head of state. Ten major ethnic groups are historically associated with modern Malawi, the Chewa, Nyanja, Lomwe, Yao, Tumbuka, Sena, Tonga, Ngoni, Ngonde, and the Lambia or Nyiha. All the African languages spoken are Bantu languages. The backbone of the Malawi economy is agriculture, which in the early 2000s employed more than four-fifths of the working population and accounted for about one-third of the gross domestic product and the vast majority of export earnings. 6,235 kilometers away is the destination of 500 million US dollars worth of Malawian exports. Let's head to Mauritania. The name Mauritania originates from the ancient kingdom of Mauritania, which itself derives from Maori, meaning Moors, the Berber-speaking people of Northwest Africa. The Mauritania flag has a green background with a central crescent and star and red bands at the top and bottom. The green star and crescent are traditional Muslim symbols and the red signifies the bloodshed during the struggle for independence from France. Mauritania is a desert nation and two-thirds of the country is covered by the Sahara Desert. The terrain here is mostly barren, flat desert with some hills in the center of the country. Founded in the 3rd century, the UNESCO-listed archaeological site of Volubilis in modern-day Morocco was the capital of Mauritania and showcases extensive remains of the Roman city that was built there. The modern capital of Mauritania, Nouakchut, derives from the Berber Nouakchut, meaning places of the winds. Mauritania formed part of the Dakar Rally, first held in 1978 and covering nearly 15,000 kilometers between Southern Europe and Senegal. It is considered to be the world's most grueling automobile race. However, in 2009, the race was relocated to South America due to security concerns in the Sahel. Mauritania is home to the Richard structure, sometimes referred to as the Eye of the Sahara or the Eye of Africa. Seen from space, the circular geological feature measures 45 kilometers across and is believed to be caused by an uplifted dome that has been eroded to expose the onion lake layers of rock. In 2019, one of the world's largest discoveries of natural gas was found in the Mauritanian offshore waters with a potential of 50 trillion cubic feet of gas equivalent to around 8.9 billion barrels of oil. The country is rich in mineral resources, especially iron ore. In fact, Mount Egil is made almost totally from iron ore. Mauritania has one of the longest trains in the world, the Iron Ore Train or Train du Desert is usually 3 kilometers long when it travels from the iron ore mines. While inland Mauritania is mostly a desert, the coast is full of vast and beautiful deserted beaches. The country's population is 4.9 million. Add 32 million people to that number, you would get the population of Angola. Angola is a country located on the west coast of southern Africa. It is the second largest 
Portuguese-speaking country in the world in both total land area and population behind Brazil. Agostino Neto, who was the country's first president, was quite the poet. In We Must Return, a poem he wrote from prison in 1956, he described Angola as red with coffee, white with cotton, green with maize, and our land, our mother. The country is multicultural and multi-ethnic. Its culture reflects centuries of Portuguese rule, namely the predominance of the Portuguese language and of the Catholic Church, intermingled with a variety of indigenous customs and traditions. The country has an exclave province called Cabinda that borders the Republic of Congo and the Democratic Republic of Congo. This is Angola's smallest province with just 400,000 residents, but it produces 60% of Angola's oil, which has been crucial for the Angolan economy, accounts for 95% of exports in Africa's second largest oil producing country. Production has nearly tripled since independence. The capital city and commercial center is Luanda. It is a large port city on the northern coast that blends Portuguese-style colonial landmarks with traditional African housing styles and modern industrial complexes. According to Marsa's annual cost of living ranking, Luanda has been repeatedly named as the most expensive city in the world ahead of Hong Kong, Zurich and Singapore. In Financial Times, to rent a two-bedroom apartment in Luanda, you will pay on average an astonishing $10,000 to $15,000 per month. Angolan businesswoman Isabel Dos Santos was once Africa's richest woman according to Forbes. She is the daughter of the country's longtime former president, Jose Eduardo Dos Santos, and is estimated to have a fortune of $2.2 billion. US dollars. Brazilian samba is believed to have originated in Angola, where it's known as semba. The two are very similar. The Kalandula Falls are one of Africa's largest waterfalls, possibly second largest after Victoria Falls. The falls are 105 meters high and 400 meters wide and considered one of the largest waterfalls by volume in Africa. It is the largest and wealthiest of the Portuguese-speaking African states, and Portuguese influences have been felt for some 500 years. The use of Portuguese language by indigenous Angolan groups date back to hundreds of years. Some were able to speak and read Portuguese as early as 1491. Other languages spoken in Angola include English and Afrikaans, and French, and to a lesser extent, Lingala. Owing to the beneficial effects of the Benguela current, Angola has some of the richest fishing grounds in Africa, especially along the far southern coast. Sticklebacks, sardines, mackerel, catfish, mallet and tuna are abundant, as are crabs, lobsters, and prawns. Angola has the world's second highest fertility rate. On average, 5.96 children are born per woman. The nation that beats Angola to top the world's highest fertility rate is Niger. The Republic of Niger, with a land area of 1.2 million square kilometers, is the largest country in West Africa and gets its name from the river Niger which is the third longest river on the continent. About 80% of the land lies within the Sahara Desert and it has been nicknamed the frying pan of the world because it is one of the hottest countries in the world. Unsubstantiated reports say that sometimes it can be so hot that raindrops can evaporate before they hit the ground. Dinosaur remains were discovered in Niger's part of the Sahara, believed to have lived there around 110 million years ago. It was aptly named Nigerosaurus. The capital and largest city is Niamey. Uranium is Niger's largest mineral export and the country is ranked fifth in uranium production globally. The country's flag is quite similar to that of India, the only difference being the symbol at the center of the flag and the shade of the orange color. The two flags have three stripes of orange, white and green. They also have a circle at the center 
with the Nigerian flag being red while India's flag has a blue wheel with spokes. Last year, fashion bigwigs from Africa and beyond attended the 16th edition of the International Festival of African Fashion, FIMA, with young and talented African fashion designers showcasing their talent at the event. FIMA is not only aiming to celebrate African fashion, but also raise awareness among African governments the opportunities that the fashion industry can make to the development of the continent. The event is seen as a launchpad for new and emerging designers wanting to interest an international audience as well as showcase the work for designers who are already established, both in Niger and elsewhere. Traditional sports such as horse racing, camel racing and wrestling still survive and form a focal point in the socialization of people. Thanks to a brilliant piece of innovation, farmers in the country are now able to manage the watering of their crops remotely from their cell phones. Dubbed tele-irrigation, the technology is a mobile phone application which enables farmers to be more efficient and economical. Niger has a rich cultural history, having been the stomping ground of some of Africa's most notable empires and kingdoms. The Songhai Empire and the Mali Kingdom were domiciled in this territory. As more African countries increase spending on their transport industries, Niger and its neighbor Benin jointly launched the construction of a railway line to connect their capital cities. The rail link which will cost 1.3 billion US dollars is part of an ambitious West African rail loop plan to link Ouagadougou of Burkina Faso, Abidjan of Ivory Coast, Lome of Togo to Cotonou and Niamey of Niger through 2,500 kilometers of rail track. It is expected to improve trade and bolster economic development in the region. Despite being a former French colony, one country in this region has expressed willingness to join the Commonwealth bloc. Let's head to Gabon. Gabon is located on the west coast of Africa and is bordered by Equatorial Guinea, Cameroon and the Republic of Congo. The Gabon's first contact with the Europeans began with the arrival of the Portuguese in 1472. The British, Dutch and French all followed and trafficked slaves as well as ivory and tropical wood. Gabon has a horizontally striped green, yellow and blue flag. The yellow represents the equator, the green symbolizes the extensive forested area and the blue represents the Atlantic coast. In a beach abuzz with activity in Gabon's capital Libreville, these young men take a peek through a telescope in an attempt to catch a glimpse of celestial bodies. Driven by the passion of building the first Made in Gabon telescope, the group of amateur astronomers is looking to inspire the nation to conduct research at the cutting edge of astrophysics and space science in order to equip them with the broad science skills. For them, the sky isn't the limit. They hope their dream to become proponents of Africa's new age astronomy will come true. Almost 80 to 85 percent of Gabon is covered by rainforests. 11% of which has been dedicated for national parks, making these parks some of the largest nature parks in the world. It is home to around 80% of Africa's gorilla population, and the country grabs a giant share of baboons, with 8 out of 10 baboons in Africa found here. Lope National Park contains the highest concentration of elephants on the planet, with an estimated 3 elephants per square kilometer. The nation is also home to the world's largest species of sea turtle, the leatherback. Leatherbacks can grow up to 2.1 meters in length and weigh as much as 900 kilograms. Hundreds of dolomite and limestone caves can be found here, many of which are yet to be explored, with a big part of the landmass remaining under natural forest cover. Many of these caves remain unknown. This machine in rural Gabon represents the big plans of a nation. The bond's leader Ali Ondimba Bongo is betting that by investing in new capacity, the country can start to take on the kings of the palm oil world. 
that is Indonesia and Malaysia. The plant is expected to produce almost 40,000 tons of crude palm oil a month. The target is to have Africa's palm oil production increase radically, driven by new plantations and processing plants like this. Mask making and ritual face paint are important parts of the Gabonese culture. The styles vary dramatically between ethnic groups. Libreville, the capital city, was originally settled by freed slaves in 1849. Libreville means Freetown in French, which imitates Freetown, the capital city of Sierra Leone. The nation of Sierra Leone has a very long history which can be traced back to the time of its first inhabitants, some 25,000 years ago. It is bordered to Guinea to the northeast, Liberia to the southeast, and the Atlantic Ocean to the southwest. The official language is English. The capital city is Freetown, which has the largest natural harbor on the African continent. It is capable of receiving ocean-going vessels of all kinds. One of the most historic and well-known symbols of Freetown is the cotton tree. It is believed that in 1792, a group of ex-slaves from America who had fought with the British in the War of Independence settled in Freetown and gathered around the giant cotton tree to thank God for gaining their freedom. The cotton tree is not only the oldest such tree in Freetown, but experts also believe that it may be the world's oldest one. Its exact age is unknown but it is known to have existed in 1787. The nation is rich in mineral deposits, especially diamonds, and has long relied on the mining industry and mining exports to fuel its economy. In 1972, the world's third largest gem quality diamond was found here. It is called the Star of Sierra Leone. This country is one of the top 10 diamond producing nations in the world. Rice is the staple food with most local citizens eating it as part of almost every meal. Popular dishes in the region include kohiri, which is rice and sauce, and jollof rice. Founded in 1995, Sierra Leone is home to the Takugama Chimpanzee Sanctuary, located in the rainforest of the Western Area National Park, which comprises an area of some 100 acres of land. This wildlife refuge serves to protect and rehabilitate confiscated, abused, orphaned, and or abandoned chimps to safety and release the animals back into the wild. Currently, approximately 75 chimpanzees are living at the sanctuary. Sierra Leone completes our list of every country on mainland Africa, and we now stand at 48 countries covered. To fully cover every country in Africa, it would be negligent not to cover the island nations, and I thought it would be interesting to cover them together. Next on this series, I'll be covering six island nations which I'd like to call the Paradise Nations of Africa. Our desire to inspire a passion for learning about Africa runs deep. If you'd like to have some better understanding of the continent, start now by subscribing and you'll be on your way. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.